Hello, my beautiful people. We're gonna talk about animal crackers. So, this movie, I believe, was supposed to come out in 2017. Like, it did come out in 2017 in various different countries, but for whatever reason, in America, it just kept being delayed. Probably because it was originally supposed to be produced, released by, uh, the Weinstein Company. And for obvious reasons, that did not end up happening. So I guess it just kind of went from distributor to distributor. And ultimately, we just assume that the film was never going to be made. But then, oh, 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 but then, but then, PepsiCo is sponsoring the video. Actually, they're not. I'm just thirsty. But then, and Netflix was like, hey, we can distribute your movie. So now the movie is on Netflix, and, you know, the film actually feels right at home at Netflix, because I feel like this movie really isn't worth putting on the big screen. <laughs> now, the main reason I'm talking about this movie is because of the sheer amount, is mainly because of the voice cast. And the amount of recognizable names and celebrities and all that type of stuff that are present in this cast. I mean, you got John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Sylvester Stallone, Wallace Shawn, Ian McKellen, Gilbert Godfrey, Raven Simone, uh, crap, yeah, Miss Danny DeVito, and even some, uh, well, Patrick Warburton. And even some recognizable voice actors like James Arnold Taylor and Tara Strong. There's, yeah, those were a lot of recognizable names. An all-star cast, pretty much. And the film is a, made by a very small studio. And I'm just wondering, how did they get all these celebrities in there? I mean, like... These are some big names in Hollywood, like John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Danny DeVito. I mean, I mean, I kind of get why they got some of the voice actors in there, but pff, huge celebrities in there, man. So, basically what the film's about is, the film's about, uh... A circus that's going downhill, and uh, the nephew of the owner, so the circus is uh, is our main character. He grew up around the circus, he was going to marry his wife, and he was gonna marry his girlfriend actually, and go work at the circus. It's, but the dad, but her dad, voiced by Wallace Shawn, was like, Hey. No, you shouldn't do that. And you wonder why I don't try to do a Wallace Shawn impression with Rex for the Rex show and animal logic and stuff like that. So he then works up. And so our main character, played by John Krasinski, ends up working at Wallace Shawn's uh, dog biscuit factory. And the wife, voiced by John Krasinski's real life, Emily Blunt, Excuse me. Making this the second movie, I believe, where John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, a real-life husband and wife, play husband and wife. The other one being A Quiet Place. You didn't know that? <laughs> but, you know, it's the dog biscuit scenes where I feel like this animation, I mean, okay, well, but 
I do think that the background and everything else looks pretty, very well done, and the animal animation and the animation designs on the animals are actually pretty good. It's mainly the people, the human animation that uh, rubs me the wrong way. Uh, particularly uh, uh, Patrick Warburton's character, who I believe is named Brock. Yeah, because oh, Patrick Warburton character need to sound the same. Yeah, Patrick Warburton. And, I mean, it's Patrick Warburton playing, playing like, a sidekick to a semi-villain, I don't know. But, we do have Gilbert Godfrey playing the sidekick to the main villain, which, I mean, how can you go wrong with that? I mean, it's Gilbert Godfrey! And Patrick Warburton is better than you, Gilbert Godfrey, let's just face it. Alright, so, also, uh, there's this scientist at the Dog Biscuit Factory, played by Raven Simone, who is trying to create dog biscuits that taste like human food, and really, the plot that goes nowhere, and so, it's reported that the, that, uh, John Krasinski's uncle and it died in a fire caused by Ian McKellen, who plays the main villain. So they had so him and his family head to the funeral, which of course uh, no one's dressed up in black at this funeral because it's a circus. I don't know. Maybe it was in their wills, or maybe they. Although since their death was on it, it was accidental maybe they didn't write wills but then again they're probably old they probably wrote it soon and the, the clown and there's a big old clown voiced by Danny DeVito who pretty much is the announcer guy who's big boy at the, at the circus I guess because uh because Danny DeVito really does love him some circus movies let's be honest and Ian McKellen is like, hey, my brother's dead. This is my circus now, sucker. Uh, so when John Krasinski leaves, he gets a box with some animal crackers. And he eats an animal cracker, uh, go for one, or was it a hamster? It was a hamster, yeah. A hamster cracker. And he turns into a cracker. He turns into a hamster hex. <laughs> so, yeah. These were magically enchanted by a gypsy woman, I believe. Who, who uh, if you eat an anim if you eat one of these animal crackers, you can turn into an, an animal. That's how the animals at the circus were able to do such amazing things. I'm staring deep into Boris Karloff's beautiful, beautiful eyes and his big freaking nose. Mwah! His nose is as big as my face. Well, not exactly, but still. But once someone eats the an animal cracker, there's a human cracker, and you eat that to turn back into a human. Oh, and uh, the box is infinite. It's never empty. Even if you flush all the crackers down the toilet, it'll always regenerate itself. Like Deadpool trying to kill himself. So that's the basic stuff in this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's the, yeah. The animation, it looks fine. Suitable for a streaming service, I might add. I feel like this wouldn't necessarily look that good for theaters. So I completely understand why Netflix picked the movie up and distributed it. Um, yeah, I will admit that, yeah, the style that they're going for and mainly, uh, 
how cartoony it is and for the humans specifically. I personally feel like this film really could have worked better if it was traditionally animated. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I feel like I feel like some of the human characters, not all of them, but some of them just look really freaking ugly. Particularly Patrick Warburton's character. I don't know, just something about it just you ever heard of that sh that uh, Canadian or British show? I forgot which one was it, but you know the cartoon Fleabag Monkey Face? It kind of reminds me of that. That type of animation style. It just looks really, really plasticky. I, I, I don't know about the animation, but, but the environment, like the backgrounds and stuff, and, you know, and the animals look pretty good, I must say. Pretty decent for this budget that they had. It's just that some of the humans just, ugh. Oh, and also the main villain looks, looks kind of like a monkey. Am I the only one who thinks he looks like a monkey? He looks like a monkey. Oh, and there's this running gag throughout the film where, uh, Gilbert Godfrey's character thinks that he's the main villain and uh, that Ian McKellen is his henchman. Not very funny. I prefer uh, my, my uh, I would prefer my Gilbert Godfrey henchman to be a little bit more feathered and red. If you want to show this movie to kids, you can. It's, it's a perfectly fine kids film. Uh, I'm definitely not going to be watching it again anytime soon. Uh, it's got some nice colors. Got a lot of references. A, a good chunk of references. Like, if you're not the biggest fan of pop culture references, this probably wouldn't be the best movie for you. But they make... They randomly make references to like Tom and Jerry and stuff, and I think one of the characters comes to something Oompa Loompa. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, uh, the movie. Mm. Out of the two films I've been wanting to catch up with for these student talks, uh, this was the film I was looking forward to the least. But I was pleasantly surprised in this film not being terrible like I expected. I I got a passable children's movie. You could show it to your kids. They'll they'll be fine. The movie's fine. That's why I sound unenthusiastic about uh, my voice. But anyway guys, uh I'm done playing catch up for now. And next week we will be back on track. Giving you my thoughts on the Ren and Stimpy documentary. And finally, I will give you part two of my movie marathon madness on the Spongebob specials. Woo! Anyway guys, that's all I have for this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And what did you guys think of this movie? And do you think it's weird that the film took so long to come out? But hey, good on you filmmakers for being passionate about your work. Anyway, guys, be sure to ring the bell, and I'll see you later. Bye!